News 46 is brought to you in part by... CD2 Special Election Candidate Debate hosted by Trunk and Western Representation. Three-day, three-city event. Thursday, June 23rd at 6.30 p.m. at the Perum Nugget, airing live on KPBM 46.1. Moderated by Karen Jackson of K9 Radio. Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. at the Elko Senior Center. And Saturday, June 25th at 6.30 p.m. at the John Oscarwaga Nugget, Sparks, Nevada. Submit your questions for candidates today. More information online at trunkonline.com. Paid for by Trunk and Western Representation. News 46 is brought to you by... By Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest health care center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience. Red Apple Fireworks. is also brought to you by Senior Dimensions is a Medicare Advantage plan with 25 years of experience in Nevada. Visit SeniorDimensions.com today and find out more. Tonight on News 46, Pahrump Valley Horsemen's Association issues a statement. And a two-vehicle accident this morning on Highway 372 and West Street. And Nye County School District search for a superintendent. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and news across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Wednesday, June 1st, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, a statement has been issued by the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association after the arrest of its president, Stephen Lee, in April of this year. An allegation made recently by the Prump Valley Livestock and Horsemen's Association, or PVL and HA, towards Stephen Lee is being handled separately at this time. As of May 13, 2011, Stephen has taken a voluntary temporary leave of absence from his position as president of the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association, or PVHA, with the Board of Directors' acceptance and approval until the incident can be mitigated against. The statement made by the Prump Valley Livestock and Horsemen's Association to stop using our registered fictitious name of the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association is ludicrous. The Prump Valley Horsemen's Association members who have made the decision to remain members of the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association after the split have the right to do so. Currently, the PVHA is still in the process of obtaining its registered nonprofit status with the State of Nevada and the Internal Revenue Service. Since the start of the slanderous allegation and charge that has been brought against Stephen Lee and the Prump Valley Livestock and Horsemen's Association, we, the members of the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association, give our full support to Stephen and will continue to stand behind him until all charges and remarks have been rectified. The Prump Valley Horsemen's Association Board of Directors and members are looking forward to receiving a written retraction from Mel Jackson, President, Alice Rosington, Secretary, Kim Sizemore, Treasurer, and the general membership of the Prump Valley Livestock and Horsemen's Association, respectively Claire P. Toomey, Acting President of the Prump Valley Horsemen's Association. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Luckily, no one was injured in this morning's two-vehicle accident on Highway 372 and West Street. Deanna O'Donnell reports. Two vehicle accident at Highway 372 and West Street. We're going to speak to Nevada Highway Patrol Sergeant Carlos Rivera. Well, right now what we have is a minor injury accident that uh, happened right now. What we have is a light green van that was coming out of West Street. It appeared the driver failed to yield right away from a stop sign. And you can see behind me there is a brown colored Jeep utility vehicle that was traveling westbound on 372. And uh, unfortunately we had another accident on here. And I saw that they hit the guardrail here, um, and uh, there's no injuries in either vehicle? Uh, injuries right now are very minor. It does appear that they're going to refuse medical transport right now, but it does appear that uh, you know, no one will be transported. There was children in the minivan, wasn't there? That is correct, and they were restrained, they, and they are fine. They appear to be fine. 
And so we're, we're looking at maybe a citation for the minivan driver? Uh, that's possibly based on the investigation. We'll probably have a citation issue for failure to yield right away from a stop sign. So we just want to ask the general public to make sure that they're, make sure they come to a complete stop, make sure they look both ways, make sure you're wearing your seatbelt, have your children restrained. Summer months are coming up, so we ask people please do not drink and drive as well. The driver of the Jeep on the scene stated that he originally installed the guardrail that protected him and his vehicle from going over the steep embankment into the wash area. Okay, well, the Nye County Sheriff's Office conducted a saturation patrol over the Memorial Day weekend. The results are as follows. Between Friday, May 27th and Sunday, May 29th, Nye County Sheriff's deputies assigned to the grant-funded operation wrote a total of 184 citations. Among the violations were the following. There were 64 for no seatbelts, 30 for speed, 4 for revoked license, 15 for no insurance, 8 for failure to yield, 1 for a red light violation, 8 for equipment violations. The Nye County Sheriff's Office arrested 3 fugitives. Additional violations are listed under miscellaneous violations. 11 of the citations written were written to those between the ages of 16 and 20 years old. There were no traffic accidents in Prump during the two days that the Nye County Sheriff's Office conducted the saturation patrol. Wow. Yeah. That wow. is a lot of citations. <laughs> and I got to say, not one for me. Not so one that for was me good. either. <laughs> Folks, the Pahrump Taxi Service is no longer in business. KPVM contacted the local transport company who stated that they officially closed on Friday, May 27th at 3 p.m. They added that they no longer have money in order to continue their operation. They hope to reorganize and may possibly reopen in the future. They added that the public should contact their medical provider to arrange rides provided by volunteers. They also said that arrangements have been made with contracts that they had with medical or disabled transport companies such as Logistic Care. The Pahrump Senior Center provides free rides to those over the age of 60 and they can be contacted by calling 727-5008. And folks, coming up we get an update on the Relay for Life totals. And who will replace Superintendent Dr. Rob Roberts. We'll have all this and more right after the break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... by Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience, Red Apple Fireworks. Welcome back to News 46. Dr. Rob Roberts will be retiring as superintendent for the Nye County School District on June 30th. The Board of Trustee, Trustees has narrowed down the applicants to just four remaining. We spoke to Board President Harold Tokerud about the process. During the search process, we hired a firm to do all the applications and get the candidates out there. We've, they presented us with a list of seven finalists. Mm -hmm. And we met the other night, and we took those seven down to four. Mm -hmm. And now we've got four finalists, and next Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to we set up interviews, public meetings at the district office, mm -hmm. uh, two hours each, two on Wednesday and two on Thursday, starting around 5, 6 o'clock. Okay. And are these local applicants? No, they're from the... 28 that completed applications were from throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no one locally apply for the job. We had uh, about 11 candidates from Nevada. Mm -hmm. Three of the finalists are from Nevada, mm -hmm. and then they're out of Las Vegas, actually. And then there's one candidate from Gallup, New Mexico. All right. And what's their names? Do you know? Yeah, I have them right here. <laughs> George Bickett is from uh, Gallup, New Mexico. Mark Coleman works uh, in Clark County for the Association of School Administrators. Uh, he lives in Henderson. Toby Holmes lives in Henderson. He's a principal in Clark County. And James Kenyon works for, lives in Henderson, but works for the Department of Education out of uh, Carson City. And 
when is Dr. Roberts officially um, ending his career here? June 30th. June 30th. Mm -hmm. And then this person will take on right right after that. Hopefully, <laughs> if if we can get, if you know, if we find a finalist, come to contract terms with him, and then give him time to move. Uh, Dr. Roberts has agreed to stay on for a short period of time if we just to fill the time with the void in there. So the public is invited to meet these applicants to come and see um, these next week and give the times once again. The times will be on Wednesday. And I think it starts at 6, and then the second meet at 1 is at 8. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday, it starts at 5.30 and 7.30. And that's going to be at the Nye County School District offices? Yes, it wow. is. The town would like to invite all citizens and interested parties to a roundtable meeting to discuss the theme park venture on Monday, June 6th from 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the town office at 250 Highway 160 near Basin. The town board will be voting on this issue during their regularly scheduled June 14th town board meeting at 7 p.m. at the Nye County Administrative Complex in the Calvada I. Oh boy. Another That's still going issue. on. That's All right. right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we, we can actually watch it live on TV as it happens. We sure can. Or we can be there in person. <laughs> the total amount of teams this year, uh, this year's Relay for Life, rather, topped previous years. We spoke to Lori Wall and Marion Maxfield to get an update on the total donations that Pahrump has raised so far to fight this terrible disease. The uh, end figures for right now, we are still fundraising until the end of July, so hopefully we're going to increase that. But um, right now we're at 41000 That's great. I think the community of Pahrump has, as always, stepped forward and uh, has opened their generous purses and helped us a lot. We had uh, 40 teams, which is a huge wow. record for us. We had 28 the previous year and 450 plus uh, participants. And it was a lot of fun. It yeah. was a lot of fun. Um, had a lot of great entertainment and um, a lot of the community or the organizations in Pahrumpa, small groups uh, came out and entertained us. A lot of the dancing groups and some of the other bands, some small bands. Uh, the, the high school drum line, select drum line, <laughs> did a great job of entertaining us. and. Um, the, I believe the choir was also there and the ROTC. It was, we just, it was a lot of fun. And this event, 18 hours, um, tell me a little bit about uh, <laughs> what this was like, Mary. Exhausting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was completely exhausting, mm -hmm. exhilarating, moving. I'm still trying to get caught up on my sleep. I'm sure Lori is too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, I'd like to thank a couple of people personally. You, Deanne, I would like mm -hmm. to thank you, our entertainment director. Wonderful job. I'd like to really thank Johnny V, who did karaoke for about, what, five hours? Five or more, yeah. It was five hours of karaoke till four in the morning. And then the Homestead Cafe came at four o'clock in the morning and cooked us a fresh breakfast. Wonderful. They were wonderful. Awesome. That was Pastor Ed and his wife, Neva, just hauled all their equipment there and cooked for us. And I, oh, we just appreciated all the everything we got we had a really moving luminary ceremony as well yes we did um i don't know i didn't get the numbers on what we actually ended up with how many luminarias we you know were purchased and people's you know individuals uh people who were honoring or people in memory of that we um honored that night but it was definitely moving um we had two uh, local people uh, that read the names karen jackson from Kenai and rodney Camacho, but it was uh, it is very moving. If you have never experienced it, something you would have to you have to experience. It's um, we honor those that are still fighting or beat their you know beat cancer, and in memory of those that have unfortunately lost their battle. And so people now can still donate to the prompt relay specifically. How can they do that? They can um, relay uh, online, which is uh, www.relayforlife.org. Light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. The Pahrump Valley High School Band has come a long way. They have one more performance this year, the Senior Graduation Ceremony. We spoke to their very proud director at a recent performance. Performance that that really surprised me uh, because it, the music was so much more difficult than our previous concert music. And this was the first time that we've actually done full run-throughs of our music without having to stop uh, because the music was just so difficult. And this was our first time getting it all together. You talked about uh, the concert band, which we saw just now, which did a beautiful job, and how we started out at 19 kids and now it's expanded. That's correct. At the 365 days ago, 19 students were in the concert band, and now 
with the drum line, we've got about 35 people, and the concert band has about 45 people in it. Mm -hmm. So we dramatically increased, uh, really over 200% in numbers. A lot of those people just picked up instruments for the first time this year and worked really hard to get at that high school level. I mean, they really surpassed several years of training to get to the high school level. Normally, don't you require that they had previous experience? Yeah, that, that, was, that was a requirement, but it was either have 19 people or to really take a time to build this year up. And that was the decision I made at the get-go was, let's open the door to everyone. Music is so beneficial to any school community and it was really important to build the program so we had something to launch off of for next year. I, I want a hundred people in my class. I want as many students as I possibly can because they do feel like they're on a team. They feel like they're part of a family and, and they really get a lot of benefits in band and in drumline that they won't get in any other class. Not only do you have drumline and concert band, you have jazz band and choir. Tell me all the uh, uh, we have, let's see, we have our select choir, we have a women's choir, a men's choir, the concert band, then we have the drumline class as well as a group of students who meet before school uh, and do a brass quintet. Then we got a musical after school, it's like a glee club. It, <laughs> I don't eat lunch. I'm all, I really don't. I, I'm always in my room and I always have students working on music. It's fantastic. It's amazing how highly the students speak of you. Well, once again, super, super flattering. I, this is my dream. Uh, when people ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, um, I first used to say marine biologist and then I found myself at a really young age saying I want to be a music director. And so I'm, I'm doing everything I wanted to ever do. So we're winding up the school year. What's that like? Oh, it, we're running and sprinting to the race line in all my classes. We have a musical next week. It's going to be here at the auditorium at 7 o'clock, $8 per ticket. And What day is that? That is oh, this, this upcoming Friday, June 3rd and June 4th. And then we've got graduation performance. We've got Prompt and Circumstance, and then the Select Choir is going to perform. And then I have my own business that I run uh, based off student leadership, and I'm being hosted at Boise State University to conduct a marching band camp over there at the end of June. And then Hawaii. <laughs> Finally, Hawaii. <laughs> what is the business? Uh, the business, it's, it's a business that I started. It's called MajorPrecision.net. Uh, you can check out our website. And it really focuses on building student leadership in music programs. So a lot of music directors will send their students to our clinic at Boise State University, and we'll train them to lead their music programs and to take initiative uh, and, and really develop their programs at the student level so the directors can continue to their work at their own level as well. <laughs> And to see Prompt Valley High School Band's entire performance, please visit KPVM's website, or you can also visit our YouTube site. He played that trumpet quite nicely. Very nicely, I, I thought. I think so. And, and you know, speaking of graduation, in 2008, my son graduated, my older son. Right. And he asked if I could sing sure. for graduation, so I was able to sing the senior song, and the kids loved it. All the seniors really, really liked it. So Chad asked this year. Our technical director, Chad. Yes, Chad. Yes, who works for KPVM, <laughs> asked if his mother could sing this year for graduation, right. something. Uh, even if I were to sing a dedication from the seniors to the teachers. Right. But uh, Mr. Buffy said no. Oh. And he will not reconsider. Shame, so shame. everybody out there, if you want me to sing for graduation, just call Mr. Buffy <laughs> and let him know. He was worried that if one parent sings, then uh, all the parents are going to ask. Oh, it'll be like but, a karaoke night. Right. Would, well, yeah. we never had that issue in 2008. <laughs> right. And uh, none of the parents will know I sang until I sang, right? So they wouldn't have caused an issue. Well, it's a little but late. anyway, I, it's just kind of common sense <laughs> and everything. Anyway, no. <laughs> okay, I'm pleading my case. Go ahead. No, so no. how's the weather? Well, you know, <laughs> we've had a lot of rain. No, I'm lying. We didn't have any rain. We had a lot of wind, though. Very windy. Everybody's been used to it, the yeah. wind. I wish I could report something different for you, but I can't. Folks, we'll have a look at your seven-day windy forecast coming up right after this break. This 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. A red flag warning still remains in effect as we started yesterday. It will remain in effect through Wednesday tonight evening at 8 p.m. Winds out of the southwest from 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts in excess of 45 miles per hour in combination with the low humidity below 10 percent. 
make easy, easy fire conditions. Uh, fires can catch quickly and spread even faster. You want to be very careful. Try not to do any burning of anything in the sort during this particular warning. Moving on to today, we had partly cloudy day out there, high of 86. Gusty winds from the south-southwest, 17 miles per hour, with gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour. Our pressure on the barometer holding steady, 29.89. The UV index was 9, very high today. Our sunrise will be at 5.28 a.m., and our record high was 103 degrees back in 1960. Looking at tonight, partly cloudy skies expected yet again, a low of 58. Winds out of the west-southwest at about 16 miles per hour, with gusts upwards of 45 miles per hour. Now, as I've said many times before, with winds that strong, it's very dangerous to be driving around in high profile vehicles. Your car can get blown all over the place. Sunset tonight will be at 7.55 p.m. and our record low is 50 degrees back in 1991. Tomorrow looking partly cloudy for us, a high of 78, low of 55. Winds out of the west southwest at 11 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 28 miles per hour. Our UV index for tomorrow is 9, very high. Make sure you have some sunscreen, a hat, something like that on out there. And sunrise will be at 528 a.m. Moving on to our seven day forecast. Looking at Friday, gusty 40 mile per hour winds expected. High of 84, low of 57. Saturday, the weekend just not looking pretty for anybody. 56 mile per hour gusts expected, 66 mile per hour gusts on Sunday with 83 and 86 respectively, and overnight lows of 60 and 56. Moving on to Monday next week, 56 mile per hour gusts yet again. A terrible Monday for anyone expecting to do anything. Cloudy skies with a high of 83 and an overnight low of 53. Tuesday, looking at 32 mile per hour gusts with a daytime high of 83 degrees and an overnight low of 59. Finishing off our seven day forecast, next Wednesday, hump day, the slowest winds of the week, 26 mile per hour gusts with a high 95 and an overnight low of 60. And the worst weather in the nation today is gesture Maryland for oppressive heat. And although I got to say, probably the most oppressive heat we've got is got to be Death Valley at this time of year, right? Why did the guy have a joker hat on? Because he was a jester. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. He I'm was blind. gesturing. He was a you know a court jester, the fool. Oh, yeah, okay. That was that was uh, the uh, the visual gag there. I'm blonde. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, a press release has been issued by Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue. A burn moratorium will begin this Saturday, June fourth. The last day to do a legal controlled burn will be on this Friday, June third. For more information, call seven five one four thousand. And folks, Prump Valley High School is asking the public to help sponsor a chair for the graduation ceremony. They are $10 per chair and any person or business can sponsor as many as you would like. For more information, call 727-9808. And I guess if you're sponsoring a chair, they, they somehow get your name on the back of one and it will be there oh, well, that's comforting for years to I was, come. I was afraid it'd be on the bottom of the seat and I just don't want anybody sitting all over my no. name. <laughs> kind of like, you know, no, like, really? No, I think it's on the back <laughs> and it, as far as I know, it stays there oh. forever. Well, that's cool. Okay. To pre-order a copy of Prem Valley High School's graduation ceremony for $25, call KPVM at 727-9400, extension 209. That is for a DVD copy. And just for real quick, the way we cover this is really impressive. We're talking like three cameras and, you know, a microphone set up. I mean, it's like a beautiful thing from what I understand. So oh, nice. you really want to make sure you get a copy of it. It's I mean, awesome. Well, I'm going to have to get a copy. Well, you have no choice. As I mentioned, Chad's <laughs> graduating. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks, and that being said, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here on the Hill KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Barump. Good night.